Yellowstone supervolcano spot, but may be calming down. Some researchers interpret the new timeline of some of the formation's largest eruptions as evidence that its activity is waning. The volcano beneath Yellowstone National Park is one of the largest volcanoes on the planet and has a history of producing large eruptions. There have long been concerns, many exaggerated, that it was only a matter of time before the volcano erupted, taking much of North America with it. But new research, published this month in the journal Geology, suggests that this volcanic threat may be losing steam, and you don't need to worry too much when you read viral headlines about supervolcanoes in the western region. The Yellowstone volcano is the result of a hot spot, or superhot area just beneath the Earth's crust. The region is burning through tectonic plates sliding across it. This geological phenomenon is part of what gives Yellowstone its character, providing a steady flow of heat that warms groundwater and produces the boiling prism pools, boiling mud cauldrons, and geysers found throughout the Park National. Unfortunately, ancient hotspot eruptions on continents are much more difficult to study than similar eruptions occurring in the ocean, because they are more explosive. While researchers can see the path Yellowstone took as the hotspot migrated from Oregon across Idaho and into Wyoming, distinguishing one eruption from another is a tall order because most of the volcanic deposits are spread across the vast landscape in a chaotic manner. My predecessor thought these messy deposits might be related, but no one was sure, said Thomas Knott, lead author of the study and a geochemist at the University of Leicester in England. He began the arduous task of fingerprinting volcanic samples from 50 locations in Idaho. Because each Yellowstone eruption would involve a different part of the continent melting, Dr. Knott reasoned that each eruption should be slightly different in its chemical profile. To gain further resolution beyond chemical analysis, his team looked at paleomagnetics. Because the iron from the hotspot was molten when ejected, it was oriented toward magnetic north when it erupted, and then locked in place as it cooled. Because magnetic north has moved throughout Earth's history, Dr. Knott was able to determine when this iron erupted. Their findings changed the timeline of some of the supervolcano's eruptions. Instead of the series of small eruptions that geologists had expected to occur as the hotspot moved across Idaho, there were actually two very large eruptions. The first occurred 8.72 million years ago. Based on the magma erupted, the eruption received a score of 8.8 .8 on the U.S. Geological Survey's Volcanic Explosion Index. Another eruption, which occurred 8.99 million years ago, received a score of 8.6. Considering that the index is not higher than 9.0 and anything above 8.0 falls into the mega-colossal category, it is certain that this is a super-eruption, said Dr. Knott. What his research means for the future of Yellowstone has sparked great debate. Doctor. Knott argues that these newly identified super-eruptions represent hotspot activity that diminishes over time. Between 6 and 11 million years ago, giant eruptions used to occur quite frequently, approximately every half a million years. However, his findings suggest that, since then, such eruptions have become less frequent, occurring about every 1.5 million years. Kerry Cooper, a geochemist at the University of California, Davis, is skeptical. We don't have much data on what, what caused the magma eruption to occur, especially in hot spots. Whatever caused the eruption 9 million years ago could happen again, he said. However, for others, Dr. Knott seems logical. 
it makes sense that Yellowstone would weaken as it leaves the relatively thin western crust and moves toward the thicker central part of the continent, says Michael Poland at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. However, other researchers say this interpretation only holds true if you look the most massive eruption, or, the really big one. As Kenneth Beresub, also of the University of California, Davis, puts it, If you also include the Super Colossus, which, let's be honest, would still wreak devastation in a number of countries, you suddenly get three major eruptions in the last two million years. And then it can be said that the caldera was quiet for between six and two million years ago and now has just awakened again. As for who is right, monitoring over a few million more years will prove more insightful.